Good day everyone and welcome to On the Bench, Sport Fishing on the Fly. My name is Brent Schlinker. I've been uh, involved with Don and Grant right, uh, many years ago when they came to our Cypress Hills Trophy Lakes uh, where we met. We've done some shows over there and I got to travel with Don and Dale and Grant over the years uh, to many locations from northern British Columbia to Cuba. And uh, we've had a great time and they've done a great show for many years of bringing you a lot of information and now the uh, new age of course we've got the YouTube and everything uh, available whenever whenever you wish so they've streamlined their shows for you. Um, I've been asked to participate in a small way here to demonstrate a few of my fly patterns and, uh, and some new techniques and that for you and some of them aren't new they're just uh, patterns that were either tricked out a little bit or just I'll bring back some patterns that you might not have seen for some time and and uh, a lot of the techniques are are not exclusive uh, to me. I mean, there's uh, we all learn as tires over the years that uh, you know I've had the opportunity to to know some really really accomplished tires and, and fly fishermen, and uh, it's it's a compilation really of all of our ideas. And there'll be something here hopefully that'll intrigue you to develop some of your own ideas and, and changes. Now we have all these new materials coming out all the time that. They weren't available back when fly fishing first started and uh, when it was basically fur and feathers. Now we have all the uh, different synthetics and many things available to us. So we hope you enjoy these, these videos and uh, keep checking back with uh, sports fishing on the fly frequently. I know Don's going to be adding a lot more content uh, from other folks as well in the, in the game. and. Uh, and uh, it, we find it's uh, a really nice way to reach out uh, where we used to do some small schools and add in maybe a local club or, or um, a fifth fly fishing show or whatever else, maybe an exposition or something. Now with the uh, internet and, and everybody's uh, able to, to watch YouTube and, and these other sources, it's, uh, it's a great way to reach out to a larger audience. So hope you like it. Uh, what we bring in, if you have any comments or suggestions, uh, please forward it off to Don Freshy. Uh, Don's keeping up, he's been doing this for uh, almost three decades now, so uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience and he's, he's far from over yet. Uh, I know I, I'm, I'm quite happy now too, I've been retired now just for a few years and we're living over, Diane and myself are living over here in the East Kootenai area in British Columbia and we've got lots of opportunities to travel and uh, I got all winter to tie flies here so uh, it's nice to be back with you all again and uh, and hope to see you in the water someday. Good day everyone. We, today I'm bringing you a new pattern of mine, Brent's Ultimate Leech. It's basically a little compilation of other flies that we've tied in the past and I've seen some other ideas uh, along the way. Uh, what I've done here is put a glow bead on the front of this one which uh, shows up really nice in stained water the real prolific lakes that you want to fish some of these big heavy trout this is a fly that will get them down deep they can see that glowing in the dark a lot of times leeches will feed or that's the best time to fish a leech pattern is near dark when everybody's in the campfire you can be out there uh, <laughs> hooking up some beautiful rainbows and we basically have um, a slender body and a, what I've done with my underbody I've used ice dub peacock for the hackle and the tail I'm just use some angora goat this is in uh, claret or kind of a burgundy and what I've done is I blended this with some more uh, just a little pinch of this angora goat uh, this is angora plus I believe it is and it's got a little flash included in there, but you don't want uh, too much flash on these flies, just enough to make it kind of the the blood uh, the blood leech uh, look you can see in the materials. Now what I've done is blended that in. I just have a little uh, coffee bean grinder that works good, or you can use a big drink blender for big bulk batches. But uh, basically, those little bean grinders you can pick them up anywhere. They they're really handy, and even uh, for blending some of your other uh, uh, dubbings that you do get uh, uh, in the bag sometimes it's it's good to fluff them up a little bit nicer to work with and then we're going to use just a little bit of uh, ultra wire um, doesn't really matter the color I got black here and uh, six-aught thread 
So we'll start, uh, we'll put a hook in the vise. I've uh, always prepared my hooks in advance to do a little step tying, if you will. I'll, I'll put the beads on and, and then the lead. I've got probably 12, 13 wraps of O2O lead on this uh, hook, which is a looks like a 3X long. It's not a super long streamer hook. It's uh, about a 3X long, uh, size 8 or 10. You could go smaller if you want to do so. Um, so in the tail, we're just going to take the pinch of this Angora goat and then roll it in my fingers. Just to kind of roll it in a, and then we can tie it on the back here for the tail, just ahead of the tie down point, which is always above the barb. And pull this back over itself, tie it back right over the barb, and that's your tail. Then we'll and tie on uh, our ultra wire which we'll use a little later to make our dubbing brush for the hackle. I just put throw a little half hitch in here. I'm tying on the Norvice so I'm going to do a little different methods maybe than what you folks will do on a, on a standard vise. Um, I pinched off some of my ice dub what I do like about the Norvice, of course, it's really, really easy to dub either bushy or, or thin or whatever you wish once you get it started. And I don't go to my thread post with my bobbin at this time. You, you Norvice guys, you can just leave it just ahead of your your finger where your dubbings come out of and it'll, it'll be there for you. It just follows you along. A little extra, we'll just pinch that off. Then I'm going to make sure you put a half hitch anywhere that you're going to start a dubbing loop. Now I'll go over to my thread post. You Norvice guys know what that's all about. And I'll bring in a little dubbing table. And uh, this bug here takes very, very, very little material. Less is more. You know, you, you see what I have here? That's that's enough for about three flies. So I'm just going to lay that on top of the thread and just very sparsely lay that angora goat on top. I blend and I take my wire over the top, pinch the two together and then I counter counter wind my Norvice here and you can use this with a dubbing whirl on the standard vices. Okay, it's the same same concept. We're doing the same thing. Now this will take us back to our tie-in point at the back. I'm just going to make a few turns, eat that wire up until I got my my uh, hackle here, my Ang Angora goat hackle. I'm just going to blend them and pull these fibers back off the wire a little bit and then uh, wrap this by hand. I can just keep teasing it back. We're going to pull this out a little bit and, and many more, but uh, this gets these fibers kind of nice and and loose and they, they're perpendicular from the shank makes them really swim and we, we try to keep our bodies as slender as possible on these leeches that's, that's that's one issue we always have we put too much materials on leech patterns I did a good solid whip finish there I went around it several times because we want to make sure this fly doesn't come apart I'm also going to put some cement on there later after I get all my flies done, I'll cement them all at once. And then I'll just brush this out. This is basically just kind of a steel little steel dubbing brush, double picker. You can use Velcro, you can use all kinds of things there. And then to get my material flowing back, I just take an old toothbrush and give it a, a good brush back. And then that lays the material a little closer to the shank, but still gives it the translucency I want in the water. Now with that ice tub underneath it gives it that really nice sheen like a, a leech would have when it's wet. This really looks good. There's a little bit of red flash in there to catch your eye and of course this glow in the dark bead head which is critical. Uh, that is uh, makes this fly so so effective. So that's how you tie this um, ultimate leech as I call it and if uh, you don't want to Tie these are also, I'm going to wrap a bunch up for the website. You can buy these online and uh, on our online fly shop.
Have a nice day. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca and if you would like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.